It's an honor to be here with men of your caliber. Um, I want to just make note quickly that the true anointed men of God are in the jacket suits. Let's clap for my guys that look like a million bucks today. They said dress business casual. I didn't know what me, Jason and I got the memo. Drew, you got the memo. But when you're on this level, you wear the jacket suit. Um, guys, I want to start here. First of all, thank you so much for being here today. It's a big honor to have you guys come and to speak to men. I don't think there's a greater need in the body of Christ than the need to raise up great men. As the men go, so, so as society goes, culture goes. Talk to me, what do you guys think about post-COVID, when we co we're coming out of COVID, what's the greatest need for men? What do you think happened to us and what do we need to do as men of God coming out of COVID? I'm gonna start here with you. Maybe it's the jacket, but what, 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 what do we need to do as men? Yeah, well, first of all, thanks for having me here. Uh, I'm George Gregory with the LA Chargers Chaplain or Chargers. And, you know, I think one of the things that COVID has done is it, it's brought everybody in isolation right? But as men, we don't need to be isolated any longer, right? We need to take our step in our rightful places, right? Especially with our families, right? And so uh, my wife and I, we travel all around the country uh, doing relationship coaching. And we used to say, it's, you're better together. <laughs> but in COVID-19, you would say that to couples and they are say, oh my goodness, we're tearing each other apart because families were just uh, in each other's faces or in each other's spaces all of the time. And yet now it's, it's the challenge coming out of COVID is to still remain in those spaces of being family men, of being men of honor, men of courage, and not to shrink back, right? Our families are gonna need us even more. So, so one of the challenges is, is to go out and isolate and play with our toys, build our businesses, uh, uh, vacation, and, and sort of isolate from family. But I wanna challenge each man now to really focus in on how you're gonna come out of COVID and be that family man, that father, that son, uh, the, the leader in the community who will take those kids and say, follow me as I follow Christ. It's beautiful, I love that answer. I wanna to toss it over to Jason. Jason, you do a, a tremendous amount of work with men. This is a, a, a huge part of your ministry. Talk to me, what do you think? What do, what, do, what do guys need? What do we need post COVID? I love what you had to say. I want you to jump in on that. Yeah, you know, isolation. Being isolated is so damaging and painful on every human being, not just men. And so, uh, you know, psychologists would say that uh, psychological isolation is more damaging to a human being than for them to smoke 11 cigarettes a day. That's crazy when you start to think of something like that. So being able to actually connect with somebody emotionally, mentally, physically, spiritually, to be known, right? To, to get out of what's going on just inside, the hopelessness, the depression, the anxiety, and really to be known and seen. And so I really feel like men of our nation need to band together. They need a place where they can really go, I'm hurting and have somebody else go, like, let me help you out. Let me strengthen you. And I'm not doing well. Okay, that's fine. You know, let's connect, let's band together, and let's go on a journey of wholeness and health. And yeah, from everything from the marriages to, to our kids, but starting with ourselves. Am I good? How do I see me? Am I okay? Do I love me? What am I believing to be true on the inside? So I really feel like we have to challenge the way that we handle our hope, our hope levels, and challenge the way that we do every day, not living depressed, but taking action steps every day. And I really feel like getting together and being able to share with one another does that for you, right? I know if, if I spend time with my dad, he's challenging me. If I spend time with my best friends, they're challenging me. And so, you know, I feel like COVID created a huge divide where men and p human beings aren't spending time really hanging out together, really looking each other in the eyes and just going, doing every day together. It doesn't even have to be this intense thing, but just doing every day where you're being challenged and pushed and it's easy to, to shy away. So COVID, I feel like created a way 
for us to escape. Let me just finish by saying this. When you are no longer able to be present in your environment because of the pain, that's where addiction starts. When you're no longer being, when you're no longer able to bear being present in your environment. And so I feel like there's so much pain, so much disconnection that came from being isolated that the, the, the challenge is, is, you know, we have men that aren't able to or don't want to be present in their home, in their work, right. with their kids, with their families. And you have to medicate pain if you don't know what to do with it. Right. So I feel like that's where men are at right now. I love that. And thank you for that answer. By the way, Jason, phenomenal work on men's ministry. You're going to hear more about this all the way from Bethel Church in Redding, California. We appreciate you. I want to toss yeah. it over to Albert Pujols, <laughs> the newest member of the LA Dodgers. Are there any Dodger fans in the house today? <laughs> Oh, oh. Thank what, you. what do we need coming out of COVID, Albert, <laughs> besides another World Series ring? What would you say is, in your opinion, something? What, what do men need post-COVID? Well, for me, these two things. Uh, the first thing they did for me was uh, after 21 years, you know, as a professional athlete, not having an opportunity of traveling and being with the family, having a summer off, and that two and a half month that we have off, I was able to spend time with my kids, build a routine, yeah. breakfast in the morning, so swimming, great. go biking, yeah. uh, dinner, whatever it was at the house. Like, just recall like back when I was young, sitting in the table with my kids, with my dad or my mother, just, just entertain with them. Now we don't have that. The kids are in iPads, watching TV in one room, and the other room, some downstairs. I have five kids, so it was like chasing everybody in the house. So what COVID did was we built a routine every morning for two and a half months, and that allowed me to be that leader that God is calling us to be at the house. That is a, that's our ministry. Our ministry doesn't start in the street. It's starting our home. And that was something that I was able to focus. I was able to see a little bit of a glance of what's going to happen after my career with my family and spending time with them. And I encourage the men you know, to use this time and take a positive out of that, out of COVID. Not just, yes, our country is struggling, our, our, a lot of people are struggling, but let's take that positive time that we were able to be with our family and spend that time. Because we only have such a small window to spend time with our kids before they go to college and then before they start having kids and they're gone. And then we be like, where the time has gone. So let's spend that time right now with our kids and be that leader that God is calling us to be in our home. It's beautiful. It's beautiful. Um, I want to throw it over to Drew Tranquil. This is a guy that played football at Notre Dame, drafted to the Chargers, been with the Go Chargers Irish. three Go years. <laughs> uh, Drew, talk to me. What do men need post-COVID? What do we need to do? We've heard phenomenal answers. Do you have anything to add on to that or something, something else come to mind? Man, Chad, I would just say... I've talked to so many guys who, similar to Albert, our off-season got moved to in our home. We weren't able to go to the facility. And so I'm hearing from so many guys, man, my wife is testing my patience. I mean, does any brother in the room need a little more patience? I mean, we have gone from our offices to the extra room in our home on Zoom calls, we're, we're around our kids more. And so if I've heard one thing just from fathers, it's, Lord, increase my patience. Yeah, so increase good. my patience right now. Yeah. I'm, around, I'm around my kids more. I need to be filled by yeah. you more every morning because they're empty in my tank, man, and this is hard. We're used to being able to have that time away, whatever your job is, yeah. but now we're in the home trying to work this job around our kids. So I think if the Holy Spirit would just increase our patience, on, that could help us out. So could anybody use a little bit more patience? Yeah, yeah. And we got a wholehearted amen for that one. I want to go back to you, uh, George. I want to ask you about how do we become men after God's own heart? What's that process look like? Everyone's here. If you think about why we're all here online, we're all here today, uh, we want to become the men that we're called to become. What's the process? What's it been like for you to become a man after God's own heart? Yeah, I think, I mean, there, there's like unlimited things to doing that, right? But 
the first thing that comes to my mind is is to be honest, Great. right? Some sometimes uh, anybody deal with difficulty in being honest? Anybody? Anybody? Any real men out there that, that will just raise your hand and say, "Yeah, me." You see, Jacob in the Bible, he tricked his br brother out of his birthright. That means his inheritance. That means his manhood. He he tricked. And all of us men have a trickster in us. Wow. <laughs> yeah, it's powerful. Great. All of us have a trickster in us. And maybe we're, maybe we're in church, but the trickster is still by us. Wow. Right? Some of us have Jacob syndrome. Some of us have Jacobitis. I wonder what's wow. tricking us that we just have to be honest with ourselves and say, although I am saved, although I do follow Jesus, there are still some things in me that need sanctification. Right. And so for me, it's really that powerful prayer pastor that, that, that David prayed when he says, search my heart, oh God. Now, if you ever want to get real with God, that's a dangerous prayer, by the way. But when you give him that invitation, God, search my heart, know my ways, test my anxieties, see if there is anything within me. Now, we already know the answer. Right. <laughs> if, if, if men going to be real men, we got to know the answer. We've got some junk in us. And we just lay before God and we say, God, test my heart, know my ways, look at my anxieties. And if there's anything within me, I want you to just eradicate it, annihilate it, get it out of me. Right. So every day that daily confession, Lord, whatever is not in me, whatever is in me, sorry, that is not like you take it out, rip it out. So good. I always think, you know, speaking of David, I love, you know, Psalm 139 that you quoted there. I love when he says in Psalm 51, 6, you desire truth in my innermost part. Yes. That if I'm not a man that's honest with myself, right. I will never be honest with another brother. And so I've got to be on. I'm disappointed. I'm hurt. I'm broken. I'm addicted. I'm struggling. If I'm honest with me, I have a shot at being honest with somebody else. Absolutely. Talk to me, uh, Jason. I'm going to throw it back to you. What, what, when you hear that question, how do, what's the process of be, all of us are here. We want to become that man that we're called to become. What are some things we need to do to ignite that process? Yeah, it's, it's an incredible question. And I, I really feel like sometimes we make it too hard. I mean, I, I really do. I mean, growing up in the church my whole entire life, it's like, um, I feel like I'm, I'm missing the boat if I do, don't do it the right way. I think consistency is key. I mean, obedience, right? Like God is looking at me going, Jay, I want you to be obedient, faithful with what you've been given, right? Day, pick up your responsibility because that gives you purpose in life and do that. And so for me, I just try and get into a really good routine and rhythm of making a time and a place where I can connect with God, where I can uh, really open up and be seen and be known. And whether that's reading uh, a, a passage uh, of scripture until I find that one thing that hits me that night and then I stay on that and go like, okay, God, what are you saying in this part, right? Because I feel like I, growing up in the church, you get really used to just reading passages so that I can put the Bible down and run out and go play, right? Because that was like my ticket, my free pass. Anybody else, you had to like read a, a section Amen. of scripture before you could go play? Yeah. And uh, so for me, I feel like I've learned as I've gotten older that being really faithful to the Lord's voice in my life, whether it's through scripture or just through what I'm feeling and hearing. And then what have I done with that? Am I being obedient with that? And reading, reading the word so that I actually find that point where my heart gets pricked. I want to feel convicted by God, not condemned because he doesn't see me as somebody bad, convicted, challenged, pushed, and I feel like that's the point when I find that place of conviction, that's the point where, okay, now all day long, I can like grind with God. Like I can like get down and, okay, what are you challenging? What are you saying to me? And really let him direct my steps for the day, for the week, for the month. But it starts with just being really faithful, really obedient, really consistent every day and not worrying about like, do I feel like it? Well, who cares if you feel like it? Right. Do you feel like showing up and playing with your kids every day? You don't. Yeah. Do you feel like connecting with your wife? You don't. But it's the, it's the right thing to do. Right. It's the best thing to do. And as a man, I, think, I feel like what my dad taught me when I was young is short-term gratification 
is the quickest path to hell. Wow. Hold on, say that one again. Maybe, maybe not everybody caught it <laughs> through, the, through the sun. Yeah. Say, just say it with your chest this time. Say it one more time. Man, I'm, I, I believe that. Short-term gratification is the quickest way to hell. I mean, on earth, like for me personally. So, you know, I don't want to read my Bible. I don't want to have God challenge me every day. I don't want to wake up and, and, you know, have that brave communication with my wife, that conflict. I'm afraid of the conflict. As a man, I'm like afraid. But the long-term reward says, show up today, Jay. Don't worry about what you feel. Worry about where you're going. What have you been given and what do you what are you responsible to do? So I I feel like the process to me is in responsibility. It's it and and, and maybe not hell literally, but a world of hell. Yes, exactly. You know, th- That's exactly what I'm saying. Th- 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 think think yeah. about you know in Proverbs when it says he he followed this woman down a path he did not know it would cost him his life. That's exactly. It's what a I'm world saying. of hell. And we were talking about this in the back uh, before, but I was using a James Clear quote: Atomic Habits. Intensity makes for a great story, but consistency makes for great progress. We don't want to be guys that are just intense for a season. We want to be consistent for years and years, like your father. We honor him. Albert, what comes to mind when you think about the, how to be the process of becoming a man? Well, for me, it's, uh, you know, using this platform, I, I think, you know, sometimes we go through a struggle in life and we think that God has abandoned us or leaving us. Uh, and I think uh, he's always there for us. And we just need to be humble, uh, come to him. He doesn't want to be religious with us. He wants a personal relationship with us. So we need to get on our knees and really come to him and just ask him. He's in control. At the end of the day, he knew us before we were in our mother's womb. So he knows our entire life. So there's no secret that we can hide. Nothing, he knows us. So at the end of the day, just using the platform, knowing Humbling, humbling ourselves and just come to God and just build that strong relationship, you know, like Jacob, Isaac, have faith like Abraham, you know, and that's how he wants us to have a relationship with him. So I think, uh, you know, for me is that just uh, knowing that that's why he sent his sons for us, knowing that we were going to struggle in life. And he's such an awesome God and, you know, he doesn't look at us like, how everybody else look at us, judging us, and saying, look at what so-and-so doing here and there. He, when he comes to us, he comes with love, grace, and that's how our Lord is, and it's amazing. It's amazing. I love that. Drew, anything to add on to that? I just think in terms of wanting to be a man after God's own heart, we have to know God's heart. And I think we do that, obviously, through opening scripture but i think even touching on what you were saying like how many men in this room open the word of god to say look god i'm i'm pursuing you like the word of god is not about us it is a revelation of who god is his beauty his might and his transformation i I love that psalms 139 too i also love when david writes create in me a pure heart Create in me a pure heart and renew in me a steadfast spirit. And so I'm wondering if we can't open God's word with a little bit more humility, like Albert's saying, and say, God, show me who you are today. This isn't about me. This isn't about me, you know, being consistent in my time. That's important. But God, when I open your word today, show me who you are. Amen. And if you think about it, you know, honesty, consistency humility knowing god these things fly in the face of culture it's not like you said it's not rocket science but it's it's humbling ourselves before god is saying i know i don't have a shot at becoming who i'm called to be without you i'm dependent upon you i I love all all of the answers i want to pivot and go to talk to me about how important it is to have brothers like iron sharpens iron brothers not we don't need more acquaintances we need more true covenant relationships we need guys in our life that are going to call us out on the carpet and say hey you're not supposed to be with the angels you're supposed to be with the dodgers okay you're not supposed to be down in san diego get up to la come am i preaching to anybody right now anybody feel the holy spirit when i said it felt the ghost just hit me when i said it but you know we need men in our life 
birds yes. of a feather flock together. Show me your friends, I'll show you your future. Right. You're the sum total of all of your influences. Talk to me about the importance of this truth in God's word as iron sharpens iron, so one man sharpens another. How has that been beneficial to you? Wow, it's with, without brothers or men to walk with, I, if I'm sharp, I wouldn't be as sharp. <laughs> It's just the power of men when they can call you up, call you out, and see you through. And so many times we like to walk on our own, right? We want to keep our secrets or we don't want to look bad. And yet with accountability, it's not that. It's really just your, it's their safety, right? Now, sometimes we get in groups and it's not safe and we got to find the right groups. But safety should come from your brothers. In fact, we're in a battle. You guys know that, right? We're in a battle, right? Scripture says that we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against what? A bit against power, high powers in wicked places, right? Now, if you look at the Roman soldiers, is when they lined up in battle and they were flanking each other, they lined up shoulder to shoulder. That means we got to be in community with our brothers close, shoulder to shoulder. And that, that, that one defensive part was the shield. I love this because the shield was, it was long and it was wide, but it was long and wide enough to cover. For, so for me, I would cover, I would hold that shield up and it would cover my, half my body and half his body. And your shield would cover half your body, but half my body. That means I can't walk by myself because I can't That's cover good. myself fully. I've got to have right. somebody that I'm walking yep. through life with shoulder to shoulder in this battle that's protecting me just as much as I'm protecting them. Come on. So good, powerful. Albert, it, it, what comes to mind for you on this question? Well, for me, I look at it like, sometimes, you know, when I have a brother or a friend or a pastor just, you know, just telling me, hey, you're wrong. They're, they're not afraid. They're not afraid to tell me that because yeah. at the end of the day, they care about my life. And that's how we need to take as a man. When somebody says something to you, they don't want to judge you. It's because they care about you. And sometimes we, we take it personal. Sometimes we want to take it somewhere else. And we look at it at the end of the day. If you look at our Lord Jesus when he walked on this earth, he could have easily done his job by himself. But what he did, he got his disciples together. It came around. And that's how we need. We need to have people around that we have that accountability. People strong that believe, the power prayer warrior, you know. They can pray for you, that you can pick up the phone at midnight or two o'clock struggling with something and calling and they, knowing that they're going to answer that phone and give you the right answer. Not because they want to be on your side, it's because they care about you. So it's so amazing, you know, and I have so many people like that in my life and because of them, that's where I am, where I am right now in my walk. That's amazing. That's amazing. Drew, anything to add on to that? I just think when I step on the field at SoFi Stadium this year against Patrick Mahomes and the Kansas City Chiefs, I have got no shot unless I got my brothers right That's by true. my side. I have no shot unless they show up. And so I just think the question to ask is, how can we expect anything different in our spiritual life? When we step outside this stadium into our job, into our families, into our life, how can we expect anything different? We gotta have brothers around us. That's it. And if you think about it, going to back to Proverbs, he who desires friends, must he himself first be friendly? Yes. We, we expect people to be brothers to us, but brotherhood is a two-way street. It is. Loyalty is a two-way street. Accountability is a two-way street. So whatever I want, I got I to gotta first give. I got to sow that. I got to be a brother that prays, a brother that asks questions, a brother that is there in hard times in the valley. I'll never receive that if I don't first sow that. So so important. We take the first step as men. Jason, anything that comes to mind for you? Yeah, I love the uh, the the saying that is, if you want to go fast, go alone. If you want to go far, there you go. Go together. And to me, I just feel like men carry way too much stuff, way too much shame, way too much guilt, way too much pain. And when you have brothers 
who know your story, the good things, the bad things, and they love you despite of that. And then they call you higher, right? They hold you accountable, which isn't for your sins. It's for your ability. Like his teammates are going, bro, they're not saying, don't be a bad man. They're saying, you're this capable. Right. Like together, we're going to be this capable today. Like you're capable of pulling this off. And, that, and so I just, I love it when we get together as a group of men and they say, Jay, this is your role. Like go charge it, get it. That's your deal. And I'm going to do this and right. you're going to do that. And so I really feel like, man, when we are in a group of men that truly know how to do relationship, I'm seen. I know that I'm really loved, not because of my performance, my good, what I can pr provide for you, but because I'm a lovable person. So I get off that weight of shame and pain, all the things that slow me down. And then together we do something that we can never do. We, I mean, we pull off a stadium event and I mean, this is like no one man put this on. Right. And no one man's gonna help change men and masculinity and heal. Right. It's, a, right. it's a company, it's a community of men and a community that, that says, I'll do my part. And so I really feel like, man, in order for us to go far, in order for us to pull out our full potential, you have to have that blessed are the wounds of a friend right. to go, bro, I see this in you. Not I see the bad thing. I see this in you. You have what it takes. Let's go. Right. That's so what friends good. do. I love every answer. I want to get, get, uh, give you one final question. I uh, want to be sensitive to our time. I, you know, usually we come to events like this and it can be very easy to tell everybody what they're not doing. Yeah. You're not doing this. You're not doing that. This is what's wrong. You know, I, I, I want to flip it and I want to say what's one thing you want to encourage every man to believe about themselves because I, I think one of the most think about Jonathan and David Jonathan comes to David and says you're the next king of Israel you know it and I know it my father knows it and tells him who sometimes we need someone to tell us maybe what dad never said maybe a pastor's never looked at you and believed this about you What's one thing you want to encourage every man that's streaming in today? I want, I want you to believe this about yourself. I'm going to throw it back to you, Jay. You start us off and we'll come back here. Yeah, I want them to believe and live that your past is not your future. You are not what, you're not your worst day. That's right. You're not what your dad didn't give to you, what your mom wasn't able to provide for you. You are not that. And today you have an opportunity. Listen, the only person keeping you from the, the future that you want, from the day of feeling incredible and courage is you. So being able to wake up in the morning and go, I'm going to live. I'm going to talk to myself very practically. If you're like, how do I do that? I'm going to only have the thoughts in my head that start in the heart of God. So when I get a thought in my head that didn't start in the heart of God, I challenge that thing. I'm going to show my friends who I really am. I'm going to love my story. I mean, that is something that you can do today because you were created in the image of God. You, right. He did know you before you were born. He has set up a future for you. So today I'm like, take 30 day, take our 30 day challenge, take action, take the first step. Don't worry what you're gonna get out of it. Be faithful, do it because you have an opportunity to decide what your future is gonna be. No one can steal that from you. It's amazing, powerful. Someone else. Well, for me, uh, it takes me back to when I was a little boy in the Dominican Republic. Uh, you know, I, I never grew up in church. Uh, my mom and dad divorced at a young age. Uh, my dad is an, was an alcoholic. Um, Come on, man. It just amazed me because it took me back to this question that you answered, uh, you know, that you just asked. Just because my dad was an alcoholic, just because my, I didn't yes. grow up in church, I had to choose that. Yes. So I encourage you guys that no matter what childhood or how many yes. people tell you that you're not good enough, that you're not going to make it. You know how many times people tell me that? Yes. And I didn't know that I was going to be one of the best baseball players that ever played this game. But That's the right. Lord had a plan for me in my life. And he has a plan for every single one of you. Just believe on that. He has a plan for every single you. Just because they say something, that doesn't mean the Lord 
a such a gentleman, he show you different way. And right now at my house, that's what I teach. I'm like, just because my dad didn't grow up taking me to church, I didn't grow up going to church. That doesn't mean I don't need to take my kids. Now it's my responsibility. We have a responsibility with our king. We have a responsibility with our wife. And we have a responsibility with our kids. And that is my job in my house right now. Serving the Lord like he's calling us to do. So it's not an easy job, but it's an awesome job that I won't give up. I won't throw the towel. So I encourage you guys that don't throw that towel, please. Knowing that God is with you and he's in control. That was so good. I think we should clap like we were in Dodger Stadium for that one. That one fired me up right there. That one fired me up. I love that. True. I think if we really believe that there's a sovereign God on the throne, then we have to believe that he has a purpose for us today. There is a reason you woke up today that you're in this seat and that you're breathing. I remember sitting on the floor of my room when I was 12 years old and I just watched Tim Tebow win the national championship and I thought, God, that'd be so cool if you'd let me be a professional athlete. Like I would, God, I, I wrote it on the back of a poster. I ripped it off my wall. I said, Lord, you know the plans you have for me. If you give me the platform, I'll give you all the glory back in full. I was 12 years old on my floor in my bedroom, but I believed that the Lord had something for me. And I go to Notre Dame and I've, I've tore two ACLs and it looked bleak. It looked desperate. It didn't look like he was gonna give me that. And he has sustained me each and every day. And so whatever that platform is in your life, your kids at home, your wife, your spouse, your coworker, whatever platform God is, is giving you, he's got a purpose for you. You're alive, you're breathing today. Go live in that truth. Beautiful. Amen. Yeah, and because I just piggyback off Drew, because we are men of purpose, because we have a God that created us with a purpose, my, my thing is, I want you men to know that you can win in life. Yep, it's true. Wow. Now, I'm an influence. I'm an influencer of the influencers, right? So I get to pastor Drew and 53 other men like him on a daily basis. And the one thing that I try to do is not just teach him how to win on the field, but off the field. And I call that winning in life. Winning in their marriage, winning in their finances, winning in their faith, winning in their, uh, on their, in their careers, winning in their relationships. And so here's the one thing I love about our guys is right before every game, there's a tunnel. And those guys believe that whatever is on the other side of this tunnel, I mean, it doesn't matter who we're playing. Kansas City Chief, our biggest rivals, they know on this side of this tunnel, whatever's on the other side, we're going to win. We're going to defeat whatever is on the other side of this tunnel. They never line up and say, I don't think we're going to win. So I just try to teach them, hey, translate that into your faith. Translate that into your finances. And I'm challenging all men here or that's going to watch this virtually to know that you are a winner because God wants you to win in life. He's not a God that's trying to get you, to, to punish you. He's a God that's trying to aid you. He gives us the Holy Spirit. He gives us power. He gives us purpose so that we can win in life and win big. Come on. So good. I just got to ask you, since we got you here, how we how we looking this year, guys? Chargers, are we, what's the prediction? Give a prophetic sense of this next football season. What's your, what's your uh, prediction here? What are you thinking? Let, let, me, let me take this first. Well, 2022 <laughs> is uh, the Super Bowl is going to be played right here in so L.A. Fast, at SoFi, right? Come on. So I think it should be go, the Chargers will definitely be the Rams. How about that? I like it. I like it. You heard it here first. Um, I want to end with praying. And I was just thinking as you guys were answering that question, isn't it just great to know that God has a plan for every one of us. Amen. That we can rest in that. It, there's no pressure on us yeah. to come up with a plan. That's true. All we have to do is get into a spot to receive yeah. the plan. Yeah. And what I love about God is that he doesn't overwhelm us. Today he's not going to show any man the next 30 years. Right. <laughs> but he's going to show every man the next step. Because right. yes. the steps of the righteous yeah, yeah, are ordered by the That's Lord. True. And so if you're a man here today, be encouraged. He might not show you the next decade, but he's going to show you today. And then tomorrow he'll show you that day. And anybody grateful to God that he is a God of leadership. He is a God of sovereignty. 
and he is a God that's in control. Jason, I'm going to ask you to end our session in prayer. Would you pray for everybody? Yeah. Father, I thank you, Lord, that you care about us, that you know us, Lord, that you do have a plan for us. And Father, I thank you that you knew that we would be here today at this time. God, you orchestrated this. Lord, I ask that you would remove the shame, Lord, the pain, the addiction off men. And Lord, that they would, even through dreams, Lord, that they would see who they are. God, what they, what they were supposed to get from their mom and dad, Lord, if, if they're lacking, I ask, Lord, that you would come in and give them unusual confidence, Lord, that they would see themselves how you see them. And Lord, for every man that's, that's carrying the burden of hopelessness from this last season, Lord, I ask that hopelessness would be broken off of them, Lord, in Jesus' name, that men all would wake up and go, all, literally in the morning, go, man, I feel hope for the first time. I feel hope. I, I have a vision for my life, Lord, and that you would help us to persevere. God, I, I also ask that, that you would strategically band men together, Lord, that you said you bring the lonely and put them in a family. Lord, I ask that you would do that. Lord, that no man would be left behind. And Father, we thank you for divine orchestration, God, and for partnerships, God, and for family. And Lord, I ask, God, that every day, Lord, that men would feel partnered with and encouraged. In Jesus' name, amen.